everyone, I am Divya and I'm extremely honored to be speaking at the Cloud Native WebAssembly Day today. So today I'm here, you know, um, to speak about the textual and the binary formats of WebAssembly. And I know you'll think and I definitely thought of it as a more theoretical and conceptual sort of a thing rather than something that is to be presented at a conference, but I hope I can change the perception for y'all. So, before I go ahead, I uh, ought to introduce myself because this is my very first session at uh, my very first in-person conference in nearly two and a half years. So, uh, I'm Divya Mohan, as I aforementioned, and I work as a technical writer with um, Ranch Labs that's now acquired by SUSE. Um, but over and above the documentation work that I do at my day job, I'm also one of the documentation maintainers for the Kubernetes and the Litmus Chaos projects. Um, I also do a bunch of community stuff as part of my roles of the CNCF ambassador and the, you know, being an AWS community builder. And I'm extremely excited um, about, you know, helping um, future generations of uh, technologists take their very first steps in the open source as well as the cloud native ecosystem. So that's a bit about me, um, and I won't go really deep into it. But coming to today's topic, um, who is it really for? Because like I mentioned before, this is an extremely theoretical, conceptual topic, pretty boring, if I can put it that way. And why, why would anyone speak, at, uh, speak about this at a conference? So there are two sections to this part. So who is this for exactly? So if you're just a developer who's trying to load WebAssembly modules into your code, probably it's a potential overkill. Uh, not trying to be exclusionary here. But um, if you know, you're interested in the behind the scenes stuff that goes on when you actually uh, compile your uh, uh, program to WebAssembly, uh, this could potentially be of interest to you. Or if you're an enthusiast or a hobbyist like me who really likes um, learning all there is, this might be of interest to you. And of course, you know, people who are um, veterans in the space already are aware of this, but if you are looking to, you know, write uh, WebAssembly compilers of your own, or you're potentially looking to optimize um, the compiler performance, this uh, session might be of interest to you. And why am I talking about this right now is another question that probably might get thrown my way because um, this has been around for five years. Like, even if you go right now onto the WebAssembly website, the version two of the draft will be there. So why am I talking about this right now? Now, um, WebAssembly as an ecosystem is just getting started. and. Uh, the, a lot of newcomers are stumbling upon the specification. And unfortunately, when I did uh, back in November 2021, a lot of it wasn't clear because of my lack of programming knowledge. Um, WebAssembly specification was really um, difficult for me to navigate through as a person who came from a non-coding background. And uh, I basically knew only the bare bones of programming and did not really understand a lot of it. So I want to make this accessible. And this is purely a selfish motivation, I understand that. But uh, in the uh, you know, spirit of making this ecosystem a more welcome and accessible, welcoming and accessible space, um, I want for more content or want for more you know, um, stuff to be out there that's uh, equally accessible to people who are from uh, any career level or any level of uh, knowledge. So that being said, how do I plan to go about this session? Um, like with everything in this universe, whether you're learning a programming language, whether you're learning cooking, whether you're learning you know, um, any musical instrument, you first start off um, with the building blocks and then you probably uh, add on structure. So if you take a language, for example, what you typically do is you start off with characters or alphabets, and then you sort of build up words, then sentences, then essays, or whatever. But there's a slight difference here. 
The difference being that when we speak about the WebAssembly program, the, we know the end result. We know that it is going to be a program, albeit in a different format. It's um, not going to be something that is um, um, apparently readable to us because uh, we are not, um, you know, all of us are not assembly level program, uh, assembly level programming enthusiasts. But we definitely do know that it resembles a program in one format. So what I aim to do at this point is to take a WebAssembly program, deconstruct it, uh, deconstruct its structure into the various building blocks, and walk you through it as though you know we were talking about a regular program in a normal language that we probably um, write programs in. So this, sorry, this is a program that I um, did not write. Let's, let's be really clear about that. I did not write this program. I took this as an example of uh, uh, wasm to uh, what github.io. So I took this because it sort of has all the elements. And uh, what I aim to do is deconstruct it into its uh, parts, which is sort of labeled on the slide that you see behind me. And I know that a lot of y'all already know the various components of uh, a WebAssembly program, namely the module and how a module looks like, what are its subcomponents. So we're not going to de delve deep into the actual components of a WebAssembly module. But what we're going to do is look at the program from the perspective of how we could potentially write it and what its grammatical syntax would be. So. Now, I said that I would not look at the module, but I do need to just go over it a little bit so that um, you know we, we have our concepts clear. So a module basically is the base, uh, fundamental unit of a WebAssembly program, and all of us here know, know that, so I'm not going to repeat it. Um, and in the binary co uh, context, if you look at it on the far right side of the screen, you will see that that's, that's exactly what it translates to. Now, um, the module on this slide is empty. So basically, it does not do anything. It is just, um, it's not going to take any inputs. It's not going to throw any outputs. It's, it's basically just there. But this is a perfectly valid program. And um, um, basically, if you could liken it to a normal program, it would be the hello world. But I, would, I don't want to say that out. <laughs> Uh, explicitly because then that would be very simple for anyone to write. So this is an empty module and uh, this is a perfectly valid web, first WebAssembly program that you could write. But when we speak about modules in real life, that's not how it's going to look like in real life because we do have to have some sort of inputs, we do have to have some sort of output. Uh, otherwise there's no point of writing software in the very first place. So what does a WebAssembly module essentially look like? Um, this is a very poorly drawn uh, WebAssembly module structure that I managed. Uh, I'm no Picasso, so sorry about that. But uh, the WebAssembly module is composed of um, these various sections that are there in green and red. Uh, we'll come to that in a bit. And most importantly, it compo it's composed of that preamble. Now, you may ask, what is a preamble? Um, so for that, I'll just have to go back to the previous slide for a bit. So in this slide, if you remember, um, this, this first set of numbers and uh, uh, you know alphabets that you can see, uh, that's essentially what a preamble for the WebAssembly module is. It basically defines the, um, it basically tells the machine that you know you are a WebAssembly uh, program and you are at version one. So uh, coming back to this particular um, slide, wherein we have the uh, you know module uh, anatomy. So why is there a difference between the various sections and uh, what exactly is the thing that differentiates them? So. Um, Except for the coloring, the fundamental differentiator here is that um, the known sections, which are in green, um, are uh, you know supposed to be arranged in that exact order. And uh, honestly speaking, we should all be thankful for the fact that we don't have to write. Uh, we have compilers to actually do this, because um, 
remembering another sequence of uh, sections would probably have been hard. So this sequence has to be maintained across um, all WebAssembly modules. And uh, this, if it is not maintained, obviously the validation does not happen. And you know, your program is not allowed to go further. And uh, you, in case of the red, red boxes or sections, um, why is it known as the custom section? Because A, it's customized in the sense that it doesn't have the same sort of, uh, you know, it doesn't follow the same set of rules that um, the known sections do, which are in green. And they are lazily loaded, which means they are not subject to the same validation rules that are uh, there for the known sections. But I digress. I was here to speak about a WebAssembly program and section it in, um, you know, deconstruct it for you all. So we've gone about looking at how a module looks like in general without delving too deep into its different sections. Now, in a typical program, what can you all think of as, you know, potential things that you would incorporate? One is, you know, the input or maybe, you know, some sort of variables or constants that you'd like to pass. Then you obviously have the output. Then you have instructions that possibly would be required to act upon those inputs and outputs. And uh, you probably might need libraries to, um, you know, run that whole program. And um, obviously, this program needs some memory because mem there's nothing that runs without memory these days. So I think that's a no-brainer. And uh, last but not the least, you will need data. Maybe not for initialization, maybe not for any other purposes, but just general data to sort of test your program or whatever. So that's exactly how we are going to look at this WebAssembly program as well. So the first section that we're going to look at is the operand section. Now, this is not you know, the specification related language, and I've tried to drill it down as far as possible. So the operands are basically the supported types within WebAssembly. And this section, after the section rather, what we, what I sort of want people to walk away with is what are the kind of uh, types that are uh, supported in WebAssembly, sorry, how do we sort of pass them, and where do they need to be defined. Coming to the actual uh, thing that's written in the specification, um, we have uh, we have a lot of types that are defined within the specification, and they're all listed down in this table here. But I believe, and I think it's the fundamental thing across languages that there is uh, there are a set of um, uh, types that are supported at the uh, at the base level, upon which other types are built on. In, um, in the case of WebAssembly, the supported types are only four. That is the, num uh, that is the number type of uh, integers, 30, uh, 30, integers 32 and 64 bits and floating point 32 and 64 bit. The vector type and all the subsequent types sort of build upon that. And um, there are, a um, and for each type, uh, fun fact, there is a corresponding uh, instruction set awaiting in the subsequent slides as well. So where exactly do we define these specific types? Because um, as we saw in this program, that, that I'll just bring up here, as we saw in this program, we uh, do not have any specific, um, you know, in, in the anatomy bit, we, we, don't, we don't know where we place this particular thing. So, um, in the type section, what, um, sorry, in uh, the type section in the anatomy module, uh, anatomy of the module, is where we would pay, place the function signatures. The reason being, um, typically, what tends to happen is we pass values as part of a function and return them as part of a function. We wouldn't probably define them elsewhere. So um, that's, that's how we define the grammar and syntax that's uh, outlined here. And um, this is essentially corresponding to the type section that we saw in the module as well. Now, when we speak about uh, prerequisites, uh, uh, when I started off programming, albeit unwillingly in, during my graduation, 
um, I was doing electronics engineering. Um, I was forced to write the same uh, hash include stdio.h a million times as far as, and now it's like a bad dream at this point because I only remember that particular line from every C programming, C++ programming language that I've written. So what is the WASM equivalent of that? I mean, I don't mean to say that we have to exactly write the same thing. And what would be, ex what would be we expected to do if we were to write, um, um, you know, export and import statements in WebAssembly? So for that, there is the next section, that is the import section. And the syntax is pretty much uh, uh, up on the screen as well. And uh, the best part about this is that um, you don't have to remember the uh, hash include stdio.h, which probably gave me nightmares for longer than I can remember. Coming to instructions, uh, which obviously are required because instructions form the uh, structure that we sort of um, not structure, maybe they are uh, required uh, so that you know the machine knows what to do with the values you pass to it. So um, there, are a, there are as many or probably more uh, type of instructions as the, num uh, as the number of types. So you have numeric, you have vector, and you probably can read them here, so I'm not going to go over and over again. But in this particular program, we have a drop instruction. And you must be wondering what sort of instruction that falls into. It's a parametric instruction. And uh, just like with uh, you know, the number of types, we uh, basically can um, use these uh, instructions uh, for both vectors as well as for numeric types. So, that being said, um, all of this needs to work somewhere in memory because um, you need to somehow store values, you need to retrieve values, and we all know there is something called as a linear memory in WebAssembly. So can we actually, uh, you know, amend the memory being allocated to us because WebAssembly is, you know, following a binary instruction format? And what are the different kinds of memory? Now, uh, as we all know, there is uh, the linear memory that um, I won't go deep into because it's allocated with every module. And in fact, if you, uh, if I can just switch back to the slide uh, for the anatomy, you see that it is allocated within the module itself. So there is a section dedicated to memory. And in fact, within the, uh, within the actual Sorry. Within the actual pro, uh, program itself, if you see, uh, memory is sort of um, allocated via offsets. And um, over and about this, we also have the intermediate stack um, from which values are pushed uh, and, uh, you know, values can be pushed into and popped out of. So that's a bit about the memory aspect of it. And last, but not the least, uh, we have data. Now, data doesn't need to be, um, you know, it doesn't need to necessarily uh, relate to actual initialization or actual, um, you know, requirement for any other functions. But you might need to just pass data uh, for the uh, processing to actually happen. So how does that get declared? So this particular uh, um, section sort of defines that. And uh, the grammatical uh, syn syntax here is also pretty straightforward. So I don't think I need to go very deep into that. Um, but yeah, I think uh, that was all from my side. And uh, summing it all up, I think that um, we are at a pretty, sorry, we are at a pretty uh, nascent stage here. And uh, uh, as the specification sort of evolves, we will have more, um, you know, uh, flourishes coming into the textual and binary format. And it's upon us to actually um, keep it 
uh, as relevant and as fresh for the newcomers as possible because a lot of the content out there is sort of uh, jargony, if I might add, and newcomers might not exactly be able to uh, understand it if you come from a standpoint of um, you know just listing stuff down. So I hope this was helpful, and I'd like up to, I'd like to wrap up the presentation for today. Thank you.